Hey everybody, Mike here. I've been watching the Starlink beta very closely over the past few months, particularly October when we were expecting, due to an Elon Musk tweet, for the beta to be over. They updated their website in October and they added a prompt asking people to adjust the position of their service address. If you haven't moved your service address, don't, just leave it the way it is. If you have updated your service address and you've had your expected delivery date push out by a year or two, keep on watching. I've got an official way to get your position back in line. All the details coming up. So the Starlink service has been in beta for a little over a year. The service launched by SpaceX provides high-speed, low-latency internet from satellites in space down to you, no matter where you are on the planet. During the beta, this service has gradually been rolling out to more and more areas, starting in the north around 53 degrees and working its way down to the equator. To order the Starlink service, you just go to starlink.com and put in your service address, where you actually want to get the internet. This can be a street address, or you can use what they call a plus code to get down to latitude and longitude of a particular place on Earth, even if there is no actual mailing address there. Once you've put that in, if you're lucky, that's in a cell that has capacity available and they have equipment available for you and you can place your full order immediately. For most people though, they're in areas where either their service cell hasn't been activated or maybe it's been activated, but there's no capacity or no hardware available to send to you. If you're in that situation, then instead of placing your full order, you're able to place a deposit, $99 US, to basically reserve your place in line as a pre-order. So that as soon as capacity or hardware is available, you're given service. At the end of October, Starlink updated their website and for people who were waiting to order, who had placed their $99 deposit, they could log into their account and they were prompted to ensure that their shipping address and their service address were up to date and correct. And they were shown a map with a pin where Starlink thought their service address should be. And you can just drag the map to position that pin directly over your host. However, what happened is a lot of people with a delivery estimate of mid to late 2021, which is really coming up fast, they moved the pin to put it right on top of their house, maybe from 100 or 200 yards, you know, one way or the other. And just that action of moving the pin all of a sudden changed their expected delivery date into 2022, or in some cases, all the way into 2023. So naturally, people were pretty upset about this. So this happened to a lot of people and Starlink actually updated their FAQ on the website to specifically kind of clarify what was going on. And I've highlighted the text that they added. Orders are fulfilled based on the date of your initial Starlink order. If you move to a new location, your place in the queue at the new location will still be based off your initial order date. So your place in the queue will be based on your order date. So it's not the date that you last moved your pin. But I wasn't completely satisfied with this response. I wanted to dig a little bit deeper to understand what was going on. So I've already got a full Starlink account. So I was able to go into the online portal and make a support request to try to get a little bit more clarity on this for all of you. And what I wanted to know is if there was a way they could review these changes and in a sense undo the, the delay that's been caused to people's accounts. So this time I got a response from Anita and she goes into a bit more detail on the explanation of how they updated their FAQ. The idea that your spot in line is really based on your order date. So even if you change it, that order date is maintained. But what does happen is if your small change or big change, but if you change the location of your pin, that might actually shift you into a different service area or cell. So as long as your updates are staying within a cell, 
nothing changes. But as soon as it crosses into another cell, that's where potentially you might get delayed. So I put together a diagram to help explain what's going on here. What you're looking at is a host near the intersection of three service areas or cells. Each one of these cells, the hexagon, is around 15 miles across and they cover the entire country. And that's how SpaceX divides up the country into different service areas. So the host is near the intersection and you can see the red X. The red X is the latitude and longitude Starlink has for your service address. So that's where they think you are, right at that point. And that might have been placed by you with a plus code or just how Starlink geolocated your address into a point on the Earth. So in this case, it's a little ways away from the house. And in this particular example, it's actually in a completely different cell. And in the three different cells, you can see the list of dates. These are all the people in that cell waiting for service and their order dates. In the cell we're in right now, marked in red, you can see March 21st and it's third in line for this cell. In the cell with the host, there's quite a few more dates, and in the third cell, there's only a single date. Now, in terms of actual coverage, the X is close enough to the host that it doesn't matter if they're in two different cells. This would still work fine. There's a little bit of a, let's say, a fudge factor between the different cells where you can still get service even though your red X is in a different cell. You could also move the red X all around its current cell and nothing would change because your date, that March 21st, is still third in line for that cell. The problem comes when people have been moving that red X on top of their host as Starling prompted them to, but that is switching it from one cell into another. So when that happens, so your order date stays the same. It's still April 21st. But as you can see, that now puts you quite a ways down the list. You're no longer third in line for the cell. And according to Starlink support, this is what's happening to those people who have updated their position and got a significantly later expected delivery date. So that's a pretty good explanation for what happened. It makes a lot of sense, and they even call out in the response that, you know, this isn't a bug or something unintentional. That's just how the system works. But understanding why something happened doesn't really get me to the point. I wanted to help these people to, you know, understand what happened, but also get it back to the earlier delivery date, if at all possible, right? So I asked a follow-up question to try to dig in a little bit deeper there. And what I wanted to know is for this completely sensible explanation, it kind of implies that if you moved the pin back to where it was, you should get back to your previous delivery date, right? Because now you're moving back into the original cell and you're further up the line now for that cell. So that's what I asked. If any of those users who you know got their date shifted way back if they moved their pin back to where it was, should their estimated delivery date go back to the way it was? And I did get a response back, this time from Asif or Asif, uh, confirming first that they have updated their FAQ with that update that I showed you at the start of the video, and also confirming that if customers do change their location back to the original point, that they should generally expect their estimated delivery date to also return to the way it was. But they do call out that, you know, estimated delivery dates are being updated to reflect the supply chain shortage and other factors. So I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical if it'll go all the way back to your, you know, mid to late 2021, but it does seem very promising that putting it back in the original location could return your date instead of being a year later than what it was. Unfortunately, I can't give you strong advice one way or the other, but I do ask if any of you watching try moving your pin back, let me know in the comments if your estimated delivery date moved earlier 
than what it's showing right now. So if we go back to the diagram, all of this explanation makes sense, but it did make me wonder what would happen in this scenario if the red X got moved into the third cell with only one other reservation. Now we would be second in line for that cell. Could we actually get a delivery date even earlier than we were before just by picking a different cell? I think it's possible and if you kind of take it to the extreme with something like this, you've got, you know, lots of different cells you could try. And this I kind of, you know, drew roughly a, a 10 mile radius around the house and said, you know, try all of these locations looking for a cell that has an earlier date. I think this does have a lot of potential in terms of the order within a cell, right? If you find a cell where nobody pre-ordered before you, now all of a sudden you're first in line, you know, that's, that's great, right? But in all of the explanations from Starlink support, there's no confirmation of how Starlink decides which cells are going to get activated first. And this is pretty crucial. It doesn't matter how early you are in the list of cells, if they don't activate that cell, you're not gonna get service before anyone else. So this is a little bit of a deeper dive into how some of the things are known to work now, confirmed by Starlink support, and my guesses and, and opinions on how activations might work. But it's always interesting to get a feel for how this system could be rolling out across the country in this early beta phase. So we're all excited for the nationwide rollout to be complete, where all cells are activated, even though it was potentially going to be in October based on an Elon Musk tweet. Uh, it appears this is still happening gradually, which is fine. I'd rather them get it right than push things out too quickly. I know a lot of people are waiting. I'll keep updating as they come out, as news is, is released. Subscribe and uh, hit the bell to get notified of any updates as soon as they're published. Thank you everyone for joining me today. See you next time.